Welcome to this tutorial in Imagineer Systems Mockup. My name is Ben Hushner for Curious Turtle, and what we're going to be looking at is how we use the planar trackers data in different ways and linking that data we get into our workflow with After Effects. So the project here involves rotoscoping, match moving, and image stabilizing. And we're going to do all of those three things based on the data from just one tracker. So the project itself is pretty straightforward. We need to extract one pack and shadow from the rest of them. And then we need to enlarge and replace the packaging. So instead of having this being a uh, peppermint chewing gum, we're going to take this into being our cinnamon chewing gum. Now we've got a few issues with this. So I just zoom in just a little bit here. Now the road scoping of this pack would be fun at the best of times. We've got some movement in perspective here. and We've also got a bit of camera shake as the tracking of the camera wasn't quite as stable as we would have liked. But none of these things are going to be particularly troublesome for Mocha's planar tracker. So first thing we're going to do is, is let's make a, uh, a rough mask around here. I don't have to be too accurate with any of these things here. Just create a very, very rough mask. And let's call this yellow track yellow track and let's just start my track going down here now Mocha's planar tracker is faster than a, a 3d tracker we only get relevant data out of it it's also much more accurate than just regular point trackers would be and so that's given us our little track there let's just move around you can see that's tracked very very nicely and stuck with our shape so even though we didn't have our perspective turned on we just had shear turned on the type of track that it, it is it's actually given us the data that we really need here. Okay, so now we've got our track. The first thing I'm going to do is just lock that up and then make it invisible because I don't want to see it or, or use it very much at this, at this moment in time. The next stage is going to be rotoscoping the pack itself. I'm actually going to use the X spine tool and just very quickly just rotoscope this up. So let's just zoom in a little bit and come in here. There we go, just a very quick rotoscope for you. Let's just uh, break that up a little bit there. So we've got our quick roto shape here. So I'm just gonna come up into my layer controls, give this a good descriptive name. So now what I want to do is I want to link my rotoscope layer to the track that I've already got. So I'm just gonna come down here and it goes link to track and I can just link to that yellow track here. So now as we zoom along, you can see that my rotoscope layer pretty much stays along with my pack here. It's always a bit of a nightmare to rotoscope shaky footage because you end up um, adding far too many keyframes and you run the risk of having wandering mats and all of that nice stuff. So what I'm going to do is hit stabilize there and this will just stabilize the package for me in this window here. So it's going to make our job a hell of a lot easier rather than having to, uh, to chase it up and down. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come to the end and I'm just going to just going to adjust the roto where I need to. I'm just going to select all of those there, just bring those in here. In fact, I'm going to turn off my zoom windows there for a second and just zoom in. Obviously, it's important that we get a good, good result out of this here. So let's just have a look at that now in context. It's automatically added a keyframe for me there. And what I've got here is one lovely rotoed package here, just using two keyframes and the tracker. So I'm gonna just test how that's looking. Just gonna turn the uh, turn the alpha on. And I can just have a little look, turn my overlays off and just see how that's looking. I can see if there's any black or anything that I need to uh, need to adjust, but that's looking pretty good. And of course, I do the same thing with the shadow as well, but I'm not going to do that in this tutorial. So that's steady as a rock there. Take stabilize off. So even with the bouncy footage, that still sticks absolutely rock solid. Now the stabilize button is just for, for preview and working purposes only. It's nothing that will affect the final render. The next part of the workflow is to uh, sort the match moving out because of course we want to bring our new pack shot here. In fact, 
kind of this bit a new pack shot here and we want to put that in place of our our old shot here so again i'm going to uh, just lock up our yellow roto once we're, we're done with it so lock it and turn off visibility there and i'm going to turn our yellow track back on here and i'll take my color eyes back off take the alpha back off okay so i'm going to come over to my overlays here and i'm going to turn on my surface because that's going to be the basis for my four corner pin and turn off everything else that I don't need to see. So I don't need to see anything about the layers here. I just need to see the surface. Okay, so now let's let's just adjust our surface here so that it matches the face of the package itself. So I'll very quickly do that. There we go, we'll just play that through. You can see that it's, it's pretty pretty much there pretty much there we only need to make a few small adjustments so that's when we come down to our adjust track here 